Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at the Douglas DC3 and the autopilot functionality. Yes, the DC3 has an autopilot, although it's not an autopilot which I would say you're used to see in normal aircraft, right? So it also has, I would say, a little bit different name. So let's go inside the aircraft and have a look. So where to find that magic autopilot in that case? Well, that magic autopilot is concentrated in this part of the aircraft. And they will call it the gyro pilot because it's not actual an autopilot. It's also pretty limited in functionality. I do think that there are even some bugs in this uh, current version of the aircraft. Uh, but hey, that's uh, how it is, right? So this is the main button, right? It says gyro pilot power. With this button, you can switch on the autopilot or you can switch it off, right? So currently, I'm flying on the autopilot with the autopilot on. But if you if I press it now, you can see that the light here uh, say, uh, goes off, which means that the autopilot has been switched off. So I'm going to switch it on again, because we're not looking at ar around us, so it's a little bit dangerous, right? Then over here, you've got several buttons which you can activate. However, the pitch hold one, that's the one uh, which doesn't work, because if you uh, press it, it will likely deactivate the heading mode. Uh, so. Currently, I'm setting the heading mode, right? The heading hold mode, which makes sure that it, the aircraft keeps the heading uh, which I want to fly. But if I press this button, right, you can see that it switches off. So that looks like something which needs to be, I would say, adjusted. Then we've got the uh, Sperry uh, illumination. Uh, this button, you can press it, but uh, currently nothing happens. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I would expect that it has to do something with uh, the gauge over here. Maybe it's better to see it in, in the night hours, right? That it let's say uh, shows the numbers uh, more illuminated. But that's uh, rough guessing. I'm not 100% sure about that. Then, how you can you manage the direction which you're flying? Well, that's the button over here. It also says if you hover over it, desired uh, heading, and you can see that it says cage heading, right? So you can uh, press it. And then you will see that something changes, right? So the cage heading is like this. Then you can't move it, which means that this is, I would say, kind of a safe option, right? So let's assume that we're, we want to fly uh, in a different direction. We can use this button to adjust the course, let's say to 260. And then if we're lucky, the aircraft will start slowly moving, right? You can also see that it moves over here. And if we would go outside, you can see that it makes a change, right? Might be a little bit hard to see in this angle, but it's it's moving around. So that's good. It will do that until it matches the direction in which we set it, right? And that means that it will fly, in this case, to 60 uh, degrees. Uh, it will make a turn to that, and then it should align it normally. Right, so it could sometimes take some more time than you would expect, but hey, that's it. Once it's aligned, you can press that cage heading. That cage heading, I would say, prevents that you are accidentally moving this button, right? Uh, and that's what they call the cage heading button. As you can see, currently it's still, so it's a uh, turning the aircraft, right? So let, let's put it on the back because it might be a little bit hard to see. Uh, but we're slowly turning into the heading which we uh, configured. And once we're there, it will simply fly uh, straight. So that's good. You can see that uh, I would say out of the aircraft, it was already thinking we were flying in the direction, right? You can also always use this one also, uh, as I say, a verification system, which will always help you to figure out, hey, which direction am I flying? So once you've done that, you can press this option, right, cage heading, which will kind of lock the heading and will prevent you from moving this button because you can't now move the button. Then we've got a few buttons over here, right? The first of uh, one is the probably the, between brackets the most important one that's the uh, gyro pilot pitch and the pitch simply tells what will be the climb rate of the aircraft as you can see we're currently flying out a pretty stable altitude but if you want to change it for example you want to climb or you want to descend you can move this button around if I move it to the right it will say go down right so but keep an eye on this white uh, bar over here because if I move it up or down you can see that this bar also changes 
and if you keep this bar centered right in the screen that means that you're I would say in the uh, we can stay at the same uh, altitude right be careful with changing these buttons right because you can see it's very sensitive so change it then wait to see what happens then make another change and then see what happens and then likely it will say at one point uh, stay the specific heading right cool to see then there's a button over here which says gauge sperry altitude or attitude indicator uh, the only thing this thing does is will change the view right so in this case it will show us the climb rate so if you're I would say kind of fan of uh, seeing what goes on then you might want to switch on this option because this tells you hey am I climbing or am I descending right so if you can you can see that if I move it here it will change this but it will do this based on the horizon at least that's what I think it does because as you can see currently it's descending so I'm not sure what this button does but it's a little bit a strange, strange option so let me deactivate it again uh, so let me change the direction again and you can see if you're moving it too fast it will react like crazy uh, so we're currently flying at an altitude of I would say where are we 7300 and one of the things I thought of that it might have to do with the altitude is uh, there's another nice button uh, which is uh, over here which allows you to uh, set the altitude limit and if you move this button around uh, you can see that things are okay, probably changing however I'm not sure I would say what this actually does you would think about the attitude uh, or altitude limit switch that it has something to do with uh, this other button but it looks like it, it doesn't do anything but maybe I'm wrong if you know how it works then let me know because I'm really curious how this one works but this is I would say the gyro pilot right so not really the autopilot but the gyro pilot Unfortunately, some of the functionality like the pitch hold is broken. Uh, I hope they will fix it in a future release. Uh, the sensitivity uh, increase and decrease, those are also buttons which are normally, say, can be found here, right? Over here, here, and here. These also don't work uh, yet, but maybe they will fix that in the future. So cool to see a gyro pilot in the uh, Douglas DC-3, which makes flying easier. Especially if you're flying the, I would say, new, um, uh, the new bush trip. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for in New Zealand because that's our, those are long flights, and then you might want to use this to kind of, let's say, fly a specific direction for a longer time and avoid that you need, continuously need to modify uh, the heading uh, by uh, adjusting, making adjustments using the uh, yoke or your steering wheel. Here ends this video. In this video, we looked at the gyro pilot of the Douglas DC-3, which is a kind of an autopilot, but not 100% autopilot if you compare it to the autopilot uh, from um, modern aircrafts. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.